meet Miss Jess Arce from 3D Learning Experts. How are you, I'm, my friend? I'm great. How are you doing? Oh, it's been a day. <laughs> but I'm always better when I come on here because honestly, when I created the name Knowledge is Love and it comes from an old eism, because I always, I always say, right, if you love someone, you keep them in the know. You never have them guess, assume, or believe because they can do that wrong. Therefore, knowledge is love. So this audience, they are just the reflection of that. And there's a lot of love here as you meet some of the people that come on tonight. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun and a good time. And um, I'm just excited to have you and honored to reconnect and have you on my show. Because God knows, I haven't seen you since, what, probably 87, 88, something like that? Probably 80, yeah, 86, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Gosh, that is something. Wow. All right. Well, I want to get started. You know, some people will trickle in late and then some others will catch it on the replay. For me, just out of my own ignorance, I had no clue, you know, and I, I guess I know about dyslexia. But my question to you, the 3D learning expert, is what are the three Ds in, in, in learning in terms of these different, I guess we would label them as disabilities, correct? Well, I don't label them as disabilities. Okay. I label them as learning differences. Ah, I like that. And that, that actually makes more sense and is a much better way of describing it. Definitely, because we all learn differently and we can get into that later on. We talk about the birth chart and um, give some examples of your placements. And um, I think one of your children, I think your daughter has some interesting placements, placements to share as well. So go ahead. Tell us, Jess, what are the three D's? So um, I'm going to cover all three of them because I have found that most people don't know what dyslexia is because movies have um, given a misconception of what it is. So Definitely. Um, my company is called 3D Learning Experts because we provide tutoring for people with dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. Uh, dyslexia is difficulty with words. That can be difficulty with reading words, difficulty with spelling words, or difficulty with communicating your words. And so most people think dyslexia is reversing your letters or words moving on the page. That is not dyslexia. That is scotopic or Erlen syndrome, which very often people will have both. My husband has both and uh, two, actually probably all three of my children with dyslexia have both. I do not. I only have dyslexia. Um, Let me just ask you real quick. So I, I want to understand how common have you found is having both? Um, you know, I have never looked up statistics on that. Okay. And... The way my program is set up, um, we actually have blue paper or blue, well, now we're online. So it's blue um, screen with the black writing because that can help with the scotopic syndrome. So a lot of people with scotopic syndrome have difficulties looking at the black writing on white paper, which, as you know, is the most common um, way we see things written. Right. Now hi, I know. Jennifer. Huh? What'd you Jen say? The Jennifer Sweet said, hi, Eric. Hi, Jess. I'll be listening on TV, but I won't be chatting. Okay. Hey, Jennifer. Good to see you. Yeah, this is this is Jess. And we're talking about 3D learning. Oh, that's that's nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. So 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 anyway, so dyslexia is difficulty with words. Most of the time, dyslexic people struggle a great deal with spelling words. Um they might mess up their um, sight words, their spelling tests, their prepositions. They'll confuse the prepositions like in, but, of, the. Um, and 
Very often dyslexic people will see a multi-syllable word, a long word, and they'll see the C and they'll see the N and it might say condition, but they'll read it as contraction because they're not really reading, they're just guessing. And that's because people with dyslexia are usually of average or above average intelligence, they, they want to they want to guess um, based on pictures. So a lot of times people don't realize their kids have dyslexia until third or fourth grade because they have pictures to help them uh, interpret what what the story says. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, what's that? No, no. And I could see that. Um, I have a child sometimes who struggles with that. But I want to ask you, because this is an interesting connection that I'm not sure of, because you did say average or above average intelligence. Does the dyslexia also spill over and affect the reading comprehension? Because my son has great comprehension. So I just got a um, phone call from someone who reached out to me today and her child struggles with reading comprehension did not mark anything on our checklist that we go through and no dyslexia is not a comprehension problem however however very often teachers will think that their students do not comprehend um and what the problem is is that their child student can't read the words so if you can't read words, you can't comprehend what you're trying to read. Exactly. But, but they don't, once they know what the words are, once they can read, they're not having um, a comprehension issue anymore. So it's not a comprehension issue, but very often teachers will say it is. And a lot of times teachers don't know what dyslexia is, so they are not much help. Well, I was going to say now, have you, because I know you, and you, we'll get into this in a little bit later, but I know your program is uh, suited for adults and children, not just kids, everybody, for adults as well. Have you ever gone in and are schools receptive? Like say, if you guys were to do uh, in-school training for the teachers, because I'm sure the staff could really use this information. I have offered it to everyone that I have met who is from a teacher to um, a principal. Uh, However, public schools have not been receptive. Um, I need to look into whether I can get certified to provide that kind of a service, but I don't know what that entails. Right. Um, But yeah, so, you know, it's it's more of a outside of school type of thing. Okay. Um, But so on to the other Ds. Yes. So dysgraphia is, dis means difficulty or not. So graph is to write. So dysgraphia means difficulty with writing. Okay. Um, And so a lot of times people with dysgraphia can speak very well. They can communicate, no problem. But the minute you ask them to write something down, they like have this block. They can't do it. Um, Mm. There's also dysgraphia in the sense where people have really poor handwriting um they write like chicken scratch so wait a minute i had that growing up (laughs) but i was a really good writer it just was so sloppy well and people with dyslexia can have sloppy handwriting as well oh okay um and sometimes the sloppy handwriting is immature um you just haven't learned to develop it. So it's your fine motor skills are immature. And right. another reason for sloppy handwriting can be um, vision processing. Right. And I think for me, it was most likely just a poor vision. Because I know as I got older, it got better. And I became a very, very good writer. So, you know, that's, it's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. Really- so one of my kids is profoundly dis graphic and um i homeschooled him from sixth grade till he graduated high school and that whole entire time he would dictate his papers to me and i would type them for him he didn't like to dictate them onto um, the phone or the computer this was you know six eight years ago 
And so there were so many mistakes that it would make that he, it was hard for him to write what he wanted to write because then he'd go back to read it and he didn't know what he was trying to say. So, um, yeah, right. that was frustrating before the technology got better with dictation. And I find still that it's not, I mean, we know obviously with our phones when we use Siri or stuff, but I think even on the computers, it's gotten a little bit better, but I don't think it's perfect yet. No, definitely not. Yeah. Um, and then the third D is dyscalculia. So again, difficulty with calculating math. Mm. And so people who have dyscalculia can, it can be as severe as they can't add four plus six. They don't understand wow. the concept of math at all. It's like a foreign language to them. And so we've, We've worked with a couple of 17 and 18 year old students who um, had absolutely no math skills when they came to us. I, I actually had a, um, an adult who was a lawyer approach me looking for tutoring, math tutoring. And I was like, wow, you went through law school. And but she said she didn't need to work on her math skills um, in law school. Right. So, yeah. That's fascinating. I, you know, and I think to me, when you say stuff like that to me and sharing with the audience, it does in a way, I mean, you know, we're not here to beat up on it, but it does in a way show huge holes in the education system in our country. And I'm sure across the world, but definitely here in America. And um, that's just fascinating because you hear all the time, right? You know, and you see it sometimes with athletes or just anybody in the general public where they actually have a high school diploma, but they might have a, a fourth or fifth grade reading level. And you're just like, how are they passed through and passed along? And, you know, but th this stuff happens all the time. Well, and, and a lot of um, actors, sports people, um, CEOs have dyslexia because, you know, everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. So they're better at those other things than they are at reading because reading is not a natural skill like speaking. If someone's not deaf or mute, they, and they are around other human beings, they will learn how to speak. I mean, unless they have some other thing causing them not to speak, right. but, but spelling is, is a skill that has to be learned like playing basketball. And a lot of people don't realize that. And so they think that everyone should be able to read at the same level. Well, not everyone goes out on the basketball court and can dribble <laughs> the ball and get it into the hoop, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it's the same thing with reading, but we don't realize that. And, you know, sometimes people will have to get hire a, a basketball coach to become a better basketball player. And it's the same thing with tutoring. Sometimes with reading, you need to hire a specialized tutor. If your child has dyslexia, Sylvan Learning Center is not the answer. And unfortunately, Sylvan Learning Center will try to tell the parents, oh yeah, we can help them. They can't help them. And um, because they don't, they use the same kind of programs that they use in school. And those programs mm. don't work for the dyslexic student. Wow. Um, and, you know, like 60% of prisoners have dyslexia. I have heard that. Yeah. No. And that that's really fascinating. And, you know, it's so funny. You know, early on, we could look at the birth chart to help these people, which is why I'm such an advocate. I always joke. And I said this to you uh, the other day. But, you know, if I was God or president, I would recommend you know, that everyone get an astrological natal birth chart because it is it is the map of your life, but it's such a guide and assistance and a roadmap to even just show you your learning style. So um, I'm going to let you say hello to some of the people, but real quick, you guys, I want to just, you know, give uh, a couple of uh, Miss Jess Arce's placements. So Jess is an uh, Aries ascendant with the Cancer Sun in the fourth house, Mercury in Leo in the fifth house. And I'm mentioning that and we'll get to it why. 
um, her Aquarius moon. Got a lot of Aquarius moon people on my channel here, Jess. Uh, you guys are brilliant, intelligent people. Um, intelligent moon, uh, intelligent moon, Aquarius moon and Mars in the 11th house um, in Aquarius. But I want to talk to you about this because we you did speak on your children and stuff like that. But I want to go back uh, real quick to some of your story uh, growing up and in high school and learning because you do have Saturn and Gemini in the third house. Now, there are indicators in the birth chart that can show dyslexia and different learning delays or disabilities um, or differences, as you said. Or challenges. <laughs> yeah, or challenges, right. And Saturn in Gemini in the third house of writing, skills, self efforts, communications, and K through sixth grade elementary school, Saturn and Gemini is your hands, your words, right? Communicating, writing. Saturn is what would cause, because I think, did you say growing up you had dyslexia as well? Yeah, I mean, I am dyslexic. Um, okay. and, and it's something you're born with and you never get rid of. I mean, okay. you can learn, you know, different tools and or get jobs that don't require you to have to do a lot of reading or spelling or whatever is hard, but... But see, this is what's so great, Jess, because the Saturn shows exactly where you are right now. Because Saturn and Mercury are two indicators for business and career in the chart. But having the Saturn and Gemini in the third house would show your restrictions and delays and kind of create that dyslexia. But over time, Saturn kind of made you so disciplined and organized and structured that now you are teaching and helping others. So you see how Saturn kind of, it, it doesn't destroy it, it just restricts limits and delays. And then over time, when you respond to your abilities, then it's like it gives you the blessings that you can have this business doing this. That is like mwah, beautiful astrology right there. Okay. And Danny Figueroa, like you, Jess, has the Aquarius moon. Okay. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Um, how, do I have the Aquarius moon? I thought I had a different moon. Um, oh, Air, I thought it was Aries, no? No, no, Aries no, is your rising sign. sign. You okay. have the Aquarius moon and Mars in the 11th house. Yeah, see, I'm just learning all this. And, uh, <laughs> but it was amazing when you did my reading, like all that I learned, um, like about, you know, that things made more sense. Yeah, no, they start to. And that's, and that's what's so great. And even think of it like this, the fifth house, you have that Mercury um, in the fifth house, um, which can give you kind of a, a youthful spirit, but it's in Leo. So um, it also makes you very creative. And I think doing, and, and also that's the house of speculative gain. So even starting your own business. Now, I've never, so tell our audience because, you know, they might not want to share it, but, you know, just in terms of obviously you guys can reach out to Jess and visit her website at 3dlearningexperts.com. But explain what you do when you are in assessing an adult and then how your program works and they can obviously, I assume you do classes over the internet on Zoom and stuff like that. Yeah, so our program is 100% online thanks to COVID. Um, yeah. It's been amazing um, that we could become, move 100% online. We used to be about 30% online before COVID. And um, we do the assessment for children or adults. The program was actually created for adults and then a, a modified for kids. So, um, sometimes it's a, you know, a little bit too mature for the kids. And um, so the assessment for like reading and spelling we do is to determine, uh, well, first, before we even get started, we want to make sure that you have signs of dyslexia. If you do, then we would do the assessment and we would find out where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. We go over seven phonological um, components. We go over the intellectual areas um, because we want to make sure the person has a high enough intellect, IQ, whatever the uh, 
appropriate thing to say these days is. Um, and we check your reading level, your spelling level, and um, and it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to do that assessment. For math, we start at the beginning it with um, addition, subtraction, and go up to about sixth grade to determine what your math levels and abilities are. You have to tell us out loud where your um, how you're processing the math information so we can understand and help you to um, to learn how to do the math and and at what point. Like for math, we teach stories instead of multiplication facts because multiplication is really difficult for people with dyslexia. Mm. For addition and subtraction, we teach a touch point system so that they can touch the numbers on the paper instead of counting on their fingers. Because what we find is most of the time people will um, still be counting on their fingers and they become embarrassed by, you know, fourth, fifth grade when they're still needing to do that. Um, and for me, I did actually did quite well in math in school. I finished my math in ninth grade. Um, I went to geometry. That was the farthest I ever took it. But I never understood. You have uh, Mr. Mr. Meth, was that his name or no? Oh, I don't even Oh, remember. God, I forgot his name. <laughs> um, but I didn't understand fractions. I could never understand anything about fractions or decimals or percentages. And um, when I got my real estate license, I knew that I could get 20% of the test wrong. And that was the area where I was going to not worry about passing it. But when I started homeschooling, my um, son was doing fractions and he was watching a video that was teaching the fractions and they showed what fractions looked like. When we were in school, they didn't show us fractions. They just had the numbers like two over three plus you know, six, yeah, three over, over four, nine. exactly. No, and, and it that, was like, I don't that understand. That video would have been helpful for us, exactly. Right, yeah. exactly. So as soon as I was able to have a visual of it, I could understand what fractions were. I literally couldn't understand it because of the way they were teaching it. That's um, fascinating. And I think that that Mercury and Leo, that that's probably what brought it home for you because it was more creative. Uh-huh. Right. So then it was easier to connect to it. That's um that's really deep. That's uh okay, so that's good. So people know how they can reach you and then also kind of and, and that's the thing, you guys, you're never, you know. I mean, here's an example, right? Jess just made a great point. Cause we're you know, no matter what age you're at, if you're in your twenties, thirties, forties, or fifties it still can be helpful to learn um, um, to get this help because what if you did want to go and get your real estate license, but you know, it could be intimidating taking another test or exam. I know for me, exams and tests can be challenging. I just need extended time because it takes me time to read everything. But I know for you having the sun and Venus uh -huh, in the fourth house of cancer, that is one of the indicators, and Jess has a ton of indicators, and the Saturn, Gemini, third house, to be into real estate. So that's um, kind of fascinating that you also went down that lane as a separate business for you, right? Real estate and then obviously the 3D learning experts. So just tell me real quick. So your Venus in Cancer, um, do you just like to buy and purchase homes or rentals? Or do you personally like to get into the, the interior design and making the homes look beautiful? That's that's my favorite part of it. <laughs> that's Venus and Cancer. <laughs> yeah, and, and we've moved a lot because um, my husband would want to move. And, um, and for me, I would like it because then I would get to decorate a whole new house. Um, mm. So yeah, I definitely, I, I love decorating. I wish that was my major, that, but I didn't know about interior decorating in high school. I took a class when we were in high school, a fashion design class, and that's what led me to the, to the fashion design world. Um, but you know, I wanted to mention something you were saying about um, 
so my husband was a mortgage lender. He got, that's how I got into real estate. Um, okay. And back in the day, you didn't need to take a test to become a mortgage lender. You could just get a job and you'd sell, you know, loans basically. Right. Well, after 2008, they started requiring people to take tests and my husband could not pass the mortgage exam. Oh. Even though he knew all the information, exactly, he couldn't read it well enough to pass. And so after he failed like maybe three or four times, he asked me to tutor him. And so I started tutoring him and he moved up four reading levels in wow. two years. And he was able to pass the mortgage exam after that. Praise God. Now that's a testimony, Jess. That's yeah. awesome. Wow. You hear that, you guys? See, so, so, so then you know your program works. How long have you been doing this business, Jess? Uh, well, I started in 2010. Wow. Um, I no longer do the tutoring. I have three tutors who work for me and I have trained them. Okay. And so they tutor. Um, and, and yeah, so that way we can help more people because I could only work with like 10 or 12 students at a time. Right. And the program takes about two to three years to complete, okay. depending on your age. Adults, you know, can do it in, actually, I think I, my husband did it in 18 months. He went from Is level this something with like once a week, twice a week? How does, how does it work? Twice a week minimum because of memory issues. Dyslexic people usually have trouble remembering the information. And so they need the more frequent, like you said, repetition. You know, they need it more frequently. Give, give me an example. So when you say like, okay, so not the point that I gave, but so more like when to use a comma, when to use a... a... We don't teach that. We okay. teach them the rules. So most people who learn um, how to read, they just look at the words and they memorize it. Well, dyslexic people can't memorize that many words. Okay. And so, um, so we teach them rules like um, the cat and her kitten rule helps you remember when to use a C and when to use a K for the K sound because um, it's harder to remember 50,000 words, which by the time you're in high school, you're remembering about 50,000 words. And that's why a lot of dyslexic people hit their wall in third grade, because mm. by then it's like 5,000 words that they need to remember. And it just becomes overload. Some dyslexic people can make it farther before their brain hits the wall. Um, but another rule is like, uh, um, there's the watch out vowels. And for some students, it helps them to correlate, you know, the movement to remember. And so our watch out vowels are E, I, Y. And so when E, I, Y come after a C, the C says S instead of K. Ah. So those kind of rules are the rules that we teach, which help with making spelling and reading easier because you don't have to remember as many words. That is, oh my God, you just gave me chills. <laughs> Let me tell you, that right there, what you just did is so, you know, so much your Saturn and Gemini in the third house. Rules, you see guys, you see, you're getting the astrology there. What she just verbally dispensed was exactly the discipline and like these rules, but like of the, like these short little, quick little, like rep repetition rules to learn that Saturn Gemini third house, Jess, that's amazing. I'll see you. And then, you know, we come back again, December 10th for Coffee Talk, where I will be teaching about Chiron. Through the signs and houses, we'll be going through Chiron and looking at all the stuff with the emotional, spiritual, and physical wounds. Very important energy. All right, you guys. Thanks, Jess. Good night, Thank everybody. You. Great seeing you. All right. Bye. Bye.